Uh, thank you, Jeff, for all the work you do. If you haven't got one, you can pick one up in the back. So for the month of September. All right, well, let's get our hearts ready for worship. Yeah, that's all right with you. Let us prepare our hearts. God, I give you my heart, my mind, and my attention. Help me listen to your calling for me today. I'm walking in here, ready to receive your spirit. I'm walking out of here, changing the world. Amen. All right. Well, our first tune today is Take My Life and Let It Be a 399. said to Moses, See, I will make you like a god to Pharaoh, you and your brother Aaron, and your brother Aaron 
will be your prophet. You are to say everything I command you. And your brother Aaron is to tell Pharaoh to tell the Israelites to go out of his country. But I will harden Pharaoh's heart. And through, though I multiply my signs and wonders in Egypt, he will not listen to you. Then I will lay my hands on Egypt, and with mighty acts of judgment, I will bring you out of my divisions. My people, the Israelites, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord, who, when I stretched out my hand against Egypt and brought the Israelites out of it. Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord commanded them. Moses was 80 years old and Aaron 83 when they spoke to Pharaoh. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, when Pharaoh says to you, perform a miracle, then say to Aaron, take your staff, throw it down before Pharaoh and it will become a snake. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did just as the Lord commanded. Aaron threw his staff down in front of Pharaoh and his officials, and it became a snake. Pharaoh then summoned his wise men, and sorcerers and the Egyptians, the magicians, also did the same thing by their, their secret arts. Each one threw down his staff, and it became a snake. But Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. Yet Pharaoh's heart became hard, and he would not listen to them, just as the Lord had said. This ends our reading today. Amen. Thank you, Pete. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We stand for the glory of God. Wednesday, Thursday, she laid on the couch and stuff, and I thought, well, I'm not going to get it. I'm pretty strong. This, I'm a big baby. I get everything she gets. So, uh, at first, maybe it'll sound like I hit puberty for once over the microphone, so for those watching television. Uh, but my brain is a little bit foggy this morning, so I do encourage you to take the scripture home. There's probably something I'm going to miss, uh, especially with this particular passage. Not only is this a historical con uh, context to something that did happen, uh, but it also has some prophecy for what will happen, and it's got application for us still today. So there's a ton of stuff to digest in this passage, and I, I hope this whets your appetite to go in and open this passage at home. So, anyways, uh, before we start, I always like to open up with a joke, and uh, I heard about this man who, who went up to a pastor one day, and after church, he said, Pastor, I need your help. I need some of your prayers. The pastor said, Sure. What can I pray for you? He said, Well, I'm having trouble with my hearing. Well, the pastor said, I think I can, I can go to the throne of grace for that. So he puts his hands around his ears, and he says this big, long, elaborate prayer. Lord, fix his hearing. Make these ears functioning again. Lord, bring back hearing to this man. And it was a beautiful prayer. And after he got done, he, he said, amen. He said, all right, tell me how's your hearing. The man said, I don't know. It's on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's a bad one. <laughs> oh. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, what a blessing it is every time that we get to open up your word. We are thankful for this brand new day. We're thankful for our church family this morning. But Lord, give us some different understanding that we might have not have had before. Help us grow in faith as we leave this place to be your disciples. In your name we pray. 
Amen. 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 All right, so if you remember chapter 6, uh, Moses is arguing with God, and it seems to be a, a thing that happens for six straight chapters. God says, you are the guy I want to use, and Moses is saying, I'm not the guy, and he gives reasons why he's not the guy. Uh, all these characters in the Bible, these figures who have gone before us that do incredible acts that God uses as a tool for his kingdom, they all seem to struggle with something. If you notice, not a single one of the people God chooses is fully equipped. Do they have all the right credentials? Are they perfect for the job that God has given them? But yet God doesn't seem to call the equipped. God seems to equip the called. And if you don't remember that, you're going to see a little bit more of this today as Moses is talking with God again. Uh, there is one thing that Moses does have, though. He's not a great speaker. He's not young anymore. He's not a leader in his land. But, but he does have faith. And that's enough for God to work through here. Uh, we're going to see some of the incredible faith that, that he has as he steps in front of Pharaoh for the first time to say, let my people go in a way that he has not. <laughs> uh, so something to note is, is that the people have been enslaved for 400 years. Uh, they've been working for the Egyptians for 400 years. Sometimes we forget about that. Uh, that's a long time to go from when you were free to when you've been enslaved. These people that Moses is trying to free now, that he's trying to liberate, they've never experienced freedom before. The, their labor that they're doing, the oppression that they're under, is all they've ever known. And for them, this God that everyone's speaking of, they've never experienced it. Well, one of the things that we can note that the, the Hebrews didn't do very well, that these Israelites forgot to do, is pass down stories, is talk about the God of their ancestors. And because of that, they haven't been exposed to God. So if, without exposure of God, they've started picking up other customs, other religions, other gods to serve. And that's not their fault, but sometimes we don't, we don't really harp on the, the parents, we don't harp on the grandparents, those who have gone before, because they haven't passed down the stories. If you read the Bible, the book of Genesis is filled with illustrations, it's filled with events that God has been, he's, he's been active and he's shown his face to so many people. Everybody knew who God was and those events weren't passed down. Uh, somewhere they got lost, they weren't communicated. Yeah, it's our job today with our kids, with our grandkids, not only to pass down stories of the God who's been here in the Bible, but also to pass down stories where God uh, has been in our lives. We've experienced his grace, his mercy, his acts of miracles. When you pass down stories like that, that strengthens the faith of the next generation. Th this whole generation of Israelites here, they have no exposure to God. They've had exposure to the Egyptian gods here. So we're going to see this. It says, Then the Lord Moses said to Moses, Oh, oh good Lord, I tell you. <laughs> then the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you like a god to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron will be your prophet. Now, if you remember in chapter 5, Moses said, let my people go. This is what God Almighty says. He says, I am the Lord. You remember Pharaoh? His response was, I don't know the Lord. So God says, you know what? That's fine. If I'm not going to work directly, you're going to be like me. He might not see me. If he needs something tangible, Moses, you're going to be the Lord here. I'm going to give you instruction, direction, and words. You're going to pass that to Aaron, your brother, like, uh, like God would with prophets. And that's how he's going to need. If he needs something tangible, something he can see, well, Moses, you're going to be like God. And we think, well, Moses, he was set apart. Moses was this leader that God used. And, and we don't see that often today. But I want to flip back to the book here of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians tells us that we are like Moses. It says here in chapter 3, verse 2, You yourselves are a letter written on our hearts, known and read by everyone. You show that you are a letter from Christ, the result of ministry, written not in ink, but in the spirit of the living God. Not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. There's a lot of people in this world you're going to encounter who have never opened a Bible before. They don't know the scriptures or the word. Uh, and you know what? That's where you become the Bible, living and breathing through God's Holy Spirit that comes inside in your heart. And when you talk and evangelize to them, they can experience the word through your interaction. Pharaoh here, he doesn't know God, but God says, you know what, Moses? You're going to be like God to Pharaoh. It's the same calling that God gives us today as his disciples, that they might not know the word, but they're going to experience God through our interaction. 
It's the same calling today. I love that Moses here gets to be a living, breathing testimony to the Lord. Verse 2, it says, You are to say everything I command you, and your brother Aaron is to tell Pharaoh, let the Israelites go out of this country. So Moses is completely driven and inspired by the Lord. He doesn't take a step without God's permission. He doesn't say a word without God giving him a word first. He's a living, breathing tool for God's ministry here. It says, verse 3, I will harden Pharaoh's heart. And though I multiply my signs and wonders in Egypt, he will not listen to you. All right, so this is something I've always struggled with, you know, uh, theologically wise. I will harden Pharaoh's heart. Well, you know, there's a lot of things in the Bible that I don't know if humans, human minds were, were meant to fully comprehend, but we can grasp some concepts here. Uh, if we go back to Exodus 4, chapter 21, or 4, verse 21, it says, God already predicted this would happen. It said, uh, when you return to Egypt, see that you perform before Pharaoh all the wonders I have given you, the power to do. But I will harden his heart, so he will not let his people go. Now Moses has gone before Pharaoh a time beforehand, and he said, well, can my, my people, the Israelites, can they go into the wilderness and worship me for three days? Can they burn offerings for their God, the living God? And Pharaoh already said no. Under no pressure, under no circumstance, his heart wasn't hardened back then. He already said no under his own will. We get to see that that's Pharaoh's intentions there. We know that he's stuck in those, that type of evil thinking. But God here, he's not saying I'm going to force him to say no. He's thinking no, I'm just going to concrete it. Now, notice that he, under any time, Pharaoh could easily submit to God. He could easily turn over and say, you know what, if this is the Lord in front of me, if this is what he says, I'll let it happen. But he continuously says, no, God just strengthens that opinion uh, when he says, I will harden his heart. So he will not listen to you. Then I will lay a hand on Egypt with mighty acts of judgment, and I'll bring out my division among the Israelites, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord, there's that statement we said seven times. I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand against Egypt and bring the Israelites out of it. Uh, so Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord commanded them. Now, I love this. It's worth noting again and again and again because it sounds simple to us, but in real life for us today, it's, think of all the failures that they've gone through. All the, th the times that, that they've experienced God moving them and calling them and they did what they're supposed to do and they acted rightly. You know, they were good people doing good things, but life got harder, got much worse. We're at chapter 7 now, and so far Moses' story all the way up here is failures. He thought he was called to lead at a young age. Remember, he acted. He, he killed an Egyptian. And you know what? It was the right calling, but it's not the right timing. Things got worse. He had to go into exile. He went over to Midian. Well, God reaches out in Midian. He's 80 years old now, and, and he thinks it's a calling, but now he doesn't think he's equipped. You know, He gets in front of Pharaoh. He says, let my people go. He does the right thing, but Pharaoh increases the labor. He takes away the resources. Things get worse. This is seven chapters of Moses' life, but it's 80 full years of nothing going the way he had thought. You know, it's real easy to listen to feet up to this point, to keep your head down low, to walk around feeling like your worth isn't that much, nothing you do or say seems to work out. But notice there's a difference in thinking when you have faith in the Lord. Moses is not saying, I am a failure. He's saying, I have failed. And there's a big difference. If you know the Lord, you know your worth. You know the words that he says about you. You know the purpose that he puts in his heart. You know, God drives you and motivates you and gives you a different perspective. You're not trapped in that defeat. You're not always looking behind you. In fact, it's so valuable that Jesus said we're not supposed to turn around and look at the plow all the time. Life's up ahead. So Moses, when it'd be real easy to just live in the defeat that he's experienced and the failures that seem to around him, Moses looks forward to God. I'm not a failure, but I have failed. Look at all the people in our history who've failed. Yeah. Thomas Edison, I, I heard he, he fell so many times, he lost a lot of money. Uh, Henry Ford, you look at all these people who've lost uh, uh, experienced failure before they've seen success. Failure is another opportunity to learn from your mistakes. And here at 80 years old, that's what it says in verse 7, he's going to experience some things going his way for the first time. But it's not as easy as we give him credit. Sometimes we just brush that off. He tries again and again and again. 
And it's harder than it sounds, but God says if you get up, you act in faith, things are going to go the right way. I know you don't think so, but I've been setting things up for this moment right now. Don't lose strength, don't lose hope, keep trying again in faith. Now, something that we get to see here is that he's going to perform miracles. If you remember, this is what he experienced through the burning bush. God had already given him signs of who he was. Uh, God has said, or Moses said, uh, well, what if they ask who you are? Well, he said, I'll give you three signs. Remember the first one? There are a bunch of different ones here. He had one with a staff and a snake. He had one with his hands and turning into leprosy. He says, perform a miracle. God knew this would happen. He'd already equipped him. Then say, take your staff and throw it on the ground before Pharaoh, and it will become a snake. So Moses and Aaron, verse 10, went to Pharaoh and did just as the Lord commanded. Aaron threw his staff down in front of Pharaoh and the officials, and it became a snake. Now that word snake in English is not necessarily the meaning that it that is in Hebrew. There's three different things it could mean in Hebrew. We just translated a snake. Uh, one is a great serpent. Not just a regular snake, but a great serpent. I tell you what, I was in DeSoto here. This isn't part of the sermon, but it's kind of... There's a timber rattler in DeSoto this week. A four-foot timber... I saw a video of it. Uh, I was walking down. He pulled me... That had his tail rattling. Four foot. Crazy. We're not at the top of the food chain over here in DeSoto. <laughs> Anyways. Great serpent. That's what it means. Great serpent. Uh, the second one is dragon, uh, this creature dragon. But the third one, and, and this is what it's leaning towards, what it's inclining. If you don't believe me, go look at Ezekiel. Go look at, at the book of Psalms. It talks about the symbol for Egypt being a crocodile. Being a crocodile. Uh, so anyways, uh, that word, he it throws it down. And it says, and then he summoned wise men and sorcerers. And the Egyptian magicians also did the same things in their secret arts. Now, we, we get to see that these people are throwing down their rods or their staffs, and they're also becoming snakes. Now, there's some, some implications here. That, there's a, a couple things that do uh, lead to prophecy. Uh, the book of Thessalonians tells us a little bit about when Christ comes again. Uh, we get to see that, that there's going to be some acts done, but, but they're not done from the Lord. It says, the coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He uses all types of displays through powers and signs and wonders that serve the lie. And there are always wickedness. He deceives those that are perishing. Now, I don't know if this is what happened, but, but this is what I think happened. I know a pastor shouldn't say, I think. There, there was a way back then where you could take an actual serpent, you twist its head at the right time, and it's really practiced this way. You turn it around. If you put enough pressure on its head, it actually becomes stiff. Like, like a rod, and you can stiffen it up, and if you throw it on the ground on impact, they start slithering again. And it looks like a miracle, but although it seems to be real, it, it might not be. And that's kind of how the forces that work against us are. They look like miracles, we're perceiving them as God, but really it is not the Lord at work. And, and sometimes that's what happens. You see, go back and look at this book. There's some prophecy for things that will come. Uh, but here in the book, or chapter 7, it says, Each one threw down their staff, and it became a snake. But Aaron's staff swallowed up theirs, yet Pharaoh's heart became hard, and he would not listen to them, just as the Lord had said. What we're going to see next is some take-home homework this week. I uh, hope we uh, bring the Bible home, open it up, and look at the next flags. I'm not going to go through every individual flag, because we'd be here till Christmas before we get through this book of Exodus. But there's a theme for these flags of how God goes to work and what he chooses to do. And it's very intentional. Look at the flags that he chooses to send. Pharaoh says, I don't know God. God says, well, I'll show you who I am. And I'm more powerful than anything you hold yourself to now. We get to see the first one. It says, the flag of gnats. Oh, wait. I'm wait. The flag of blood, then frogs and gnats and flies. They each serve a purpose. Those people were in Egypt, they worshipped a certain god, and it was a god of something. There is a god of the Nile, a god of the sun, god of fertility and harvest. You know what? Each time God shows up, he shows that he's bigger, he's more powerful, that he's, he's more, oh good lord, worse than their other gods. You know, all those people that they place their hope in, their trust in, things that weren't necessarily true, God's going to show that he's the only one that you should put your trust in. He's the one that's bigger than all these things here. Uh, so that's what we're coming up to. We're going to pick up here uh, at the very last flag next week as we go through the book of Exodus. 
Uh, but there is a little bit of homework here. So hopefully you can take something home and then work with it. Well, let's go to the throne of grace. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, it's a blessing every time we get to open your word and experience your, your truth. Lord, we pray that we get to have faith like Moses, that uh, each time that we seem to be knocked down or things aren't going our way, Lord, that we have the strength to stand on our faith and, and try again. Lord, help us to try again like Moses. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So, all right, what do we got here? I am a soldier of the cross. This is on 511. Time had come when you would save your people. 
He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night when he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is dying. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. All right, this is that, the blessing. If it's all right, could we give the blessing together? If you'd all point at the element. <clears throat> Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 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 All right. All right, Cheyenne. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you want to come up? <laughs> and you are not just walking, you're speed walking. Amen. Yes. All right, so we're going to have Bill with the steadier hand. Oh, well, maybe, I don't know. I just assumed that Dad might have steadier hands, but it's Bill, so... <laughs> <laughs> Baptized by wine. All right, juice. You're gonna say, "This is the body given for you. This is the blood shed for you." All right. And you guys are free to come up. The table is set. All are welcome. Really soft horse. Really soft here, sir. Good looking guy. Like you. There you go. or not, but I think not only is it wonderful to have Cheyenne giving communion, but to see you up and walking and moving around freely as you're giving communion out, what an example of God's restoration, <laughs> you know, what a blessing. Yeah. Oh my goodness gracious. All right, uh, well, if it's okay, we're probably going to end up skipping the last hymn here. I knew it would happen. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, 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 if it's okay, uh, we've got time for joys and concerns. Yes, ma'am. After school, I finally get to start taking off my braces out of my shoes. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> taking off those braces. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right. <coughs> Anything else? Gary? Uh, Chris Tyler's uh, mother is back in the hospital. <coughs> so they're, hope, they're hoping that uh, they're going to try to get her moved up here instead of down in Texas. Yeah. Pete, uh, a Sister Margaret is transitioning over close to going home to be with the Lord. 
Is she in there? Her. Yeah. She's, at, uh, she, she's at the villa where I work. Okay. This is on St. Joe's Ridge. Mm -hmm. her, her body is failing her fast. Okay. Anything else? Um, pray for Desiree. Uh, she found out uh, she's going to have a baby. So, say <laughs> that.
God, you've heard everything that we've said aloud, but, but we also know uh, you hear the words and the prayers that we keep silently to ourselves in our hearts and minds. We know that uh, every prayer, every request, every petition makes your ear vocal or, or unsaid. And Lord, we pray all this in the same way that your son Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of forever. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of stuff uh, from the scripture we read today. Uh, they, the stories of God weren't passed down for 400 years. They started worshiping other gods. Moses, after only experiencing failure, continues to try and try again. And at the end, we get to see God reveals himself in a way that he is just overcoming. He's, he can't miss it. He's bigger than everything else we might put our trust and our hope in. And open the scripture up. Read the next couple of chapters because we're skipping most of the flags here. You're welcome. I'll see you next Sunday. Go in peace. Be church. God be with you until we meet again. Thank <laughs> you.